Hi, everybody. It's Dave Turnquist, a broker in Houston, Texas, and we're going to continue our video series. Uh, this time we're going to cover compensation agreement between brokers, uh, the TXR 2402. This is a new form, and we'll cover that in our today's video tutorial. So let's get started. Um, here is the form. It is one a one-page form, uh, and this is going to be used when a property is listed by a real estate broker, um, listing agent. Uh, and as you know, as of August 17th, 2024, uh, commissions are no longer uh, shown on the MLS. So any buyer's agent co-op fee is not going to be shared on the MLS. So um, you'll need to contact the, the listing agent uh, and find out if there is um, a commission being offered. And um, once there is, this is the form you'll you'll use to guarantee that commission is going to be paid. So uh, we start off paragraph one. The parties, just like most contracts, you have um, the buyer and the seller, or the landlord and the tenant. In this case, you have the listing broker. So you're going to put um, the name of the listing brokerage, uh, and then you're going to put your brokerage here as the buyer's. Uh, the buyer's agent, the buyer's broker. Next will be the property um, information, the address. So you'll put the full address here. Um, you could put the legal description as well. Uh, it's not really necessary here, uh, as long as you have the correct address and the zip code. And you're going to register your clients to make sure that you show that you are the procuring cause uh, that you are the one that took them to the home to see it. Uh, they were you have a buyer's representation agreement with them. That's very important. Remember, you cannot show a house as a buyer's agent without having a buyer's rep agreement in place uh, with your buyers. So here I'm registering Brenton Barnes and Brianna Barnes. In paragraph four, when does this uh, agreement begin and end? Now. Normally on the contract, we would have the commission on the contract itself, and it was part of the MLS, so it was never really a big deal. Uh, but now we have to have this form to indicate that a commission is being paid. So uh, when does this agreement begin and when does it end? Now, normally a, a deal is going to take about 30 days from contract to close. But uh, you know as well as I do, sometimes things uh, go wrong. There's uh, the home gets damaged because of a flood or a tree falls on it, or there's some issue with the loan, uh, and you know we have a two or three week delay, uh, or the seller needs a lease back, and or, or or the or they need to they're not ready to sell yet. Whatever the reason is, there could be a delay. Um, so I would recommend you get at least 90 days on this term, um, if not longer, you can get it as long as you want, but I, I would, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable with, with less just in case something went wrong. So you need a beginning date and an ending date when this agreement to pay you a commission ends. Um, paragraph five, cooperating broker fee. So this is where you're gonna put, what is the commission that they're offering? Since it's not in the MLS, I had to, you know, email them or call them or text them and ask, what what's the commission? What are you offering me uh, when I present this buyer with, with an offer? So um, it could be a percentage uh, as shown here. Uh, in this case, it's 2.5%. Or it can be um, a flat fee. And it could be, you know, $2,500, uh, you know, $10,000, whatever, whatever it's going to be. But you got to pick one of those. And um, as I've mentioned in other videos, anytime you're not using a blank, it's best to put an NA there showing that, that it does not apply. Um, because when you leave a blank there, sometimes people think that something is supposed to be there and they will um, say, oh, well, you forgot to do something. No, I didn't forget to do anything. There's not supposed to be anything there. So by putting NA in all the blanks, that we're not using that indicates that you know that wasn't needed. Now, also keep in mind, normally we use this form uh, for leases, uh, but now we're using it for purchases as well. 
So if you're using it for a purchase, you're going to check 5A1. If you're using it for a lease, it's going to be 5A2. So 5A2 is for a lease. And in this example, it's NA. But if it were a lease and I was expecting a commission, let's say I asked for 50% of one full month's rent. In that case, instead of this NA, I would put 50% of one full month's rent. Or I could ask for a flat fee. Uh, in that case, uh, I would ask, hey, you know, what are you offering on a lease commission? Uh, this goes through when it's earned and payable. And um, let's see. Let me go down to the next page because I have other writing on these. Now, paragraph six is legal disclosures. It just tells you, hey, this is a legally... A binding document that you're signing and you'll notice that it has a place for the listing broker and the buyer's broker to sign uh, and of course the the listing agent and the buyer's agent can sign on behalf of the broker if your broker allows that uh, i know most do uh, but then again only list this uh, only use this form if the property is listed uh, by uh, um, a listing agent. Uh, you, you would not use this if it's a for sale by owner because there's no compensation between brokers because there's only one broker involved. If there's, you know, there has to be two brokers involved in order there for there to be compensation between brokers. So this is if the home is listed and you don't know what the, uh, or you're, you want to get paid the commission that they're offering after you've spoken to them. All right, so that's going to end our video today. Hope you got something out of that.